In this video, we're going to look at the differences in the Q setting of the 11 rack standalone editor versus the integrated 11 rack editor and the 11 rack unit itself. So here we are in Pro Tools 10 and I have the integrated editor open. And again, the integrated editor was included from Pro Tools 8.0.1 all the way through Pro Tools 10. It's not integrated in Pro Tools 11, which is why we have the standalone 11 rack editor, which we'll go ahead and pop open here. We'll let this load up. So now we have the standalone editor open and I'll go ahead and run always on top. And I have a video showing exactly what this does here. This just keeps the standalone editor on top of other windows. So it's not continually getting sent to the back. Okay, so we have the integrated editor open, the standalone editor open, and now I'll switch to the parametric EQ and we'll take a look at these differences in the Q setting. I'll also switch over here to the parametric EQ on the 11 rack. All right, so you are probably noticing some differences here in these Q settings. You'll notice on this low filter, we have a Q of 2.3. Meanwhile, if we look on the standalone editor, we're at 6.3, and on the 11 rack itself, we're on 2.3, just like the integrated editor. We can also look at these other settings like our low mid filter here, 1.7 on the integrated editor. We'll look on our 11 rack. The Q is 1.7 there. If we look on the standalone editor, it's 5.6. And these other Q settings are also different. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is I did the dread rig pack, the lock rig pack, where I talk about using the Q to raise the low end. And in that video, I mentioned that the Q settings are actually different on the standalone editor versus the integrated editor and the 11 rack itself. And this video is just explaining that. So if we look, and I'll adjust this low filter Q, we'll see the actual positions of the knobs. They actually stay in sync. So if you just look at the white dot here on these knobs, and it, you know, it doesn't matter where I adjust this from. I can adjust it from the integrated editor, the standalone editor, or from the 11 rack itself here. And as you can see, the knobs pretty much stay in sync. But the actual values displayed are different. Now, while I have no knowledge of exactly why this is, my thinking is that when they created the standalone 11 rack editor, what it looks like to me is they use a linear algorithm for the knob and for the readout for the standalone editor, while in the integrated editor and on the 11 rack, it looks like they're using an exponential algorithm. If we bottom this out to, we'll just basically say zero, even though it's 0 0.2. If the lowest is zero or 0 0.2 in this case, and the highest is 10, well, they only have to set those two values. And then everything else will be interpreted depending on where the knob is in position. That would be linear. Whereas with exponential, it's a little more complicated in the way the numbers multiply upon themselves or something like that. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. If you end up making rigs yourself, say set up a rig with the 11 rack, then you look on the standalone editor and then it may look like your Q values are all wrong when in reality, they're just reading out differently. So there you go. That's all for this video. I just wanted to point out that while the Q values are different on the standalone editor, you'll actually end up with the same sound, even though the readout is different. So you're going to have the same sound. So just don't get confused by that.